What's up everybody and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video where today I wanted to go and try something that I haven't tried before and I really did have to rack my banners to what I actually haven't done between these two units but I thought you know what I've never taken them outdoors into a net like the 24-7 golf net here and compared them and actually got the data to see what's better on the individual shots and the shot data and then also how close they are in relation to ball flight and shot shape with a wedge, a seven iron and a driver. So we're gonna get into that and do it. And here's how I'm gonna get accurate numbers. I have the RCT ball here, which the Garmin says makes it about 80% or, or more accurate in terms of its shot shape and its spin rate because it's now measuring the spin. I've also got the RPT pattern on the ball from Rapsodo Ball Dots so that the MLM2 Pro can measure the spin rate and the spin axis. We're going to put these two down and we're going to put them to the test and we're going to get into it right now. We've got a game wedge to start. We've got them both set up here. Uh, like I said, I've got the 24-7 Golf Net. If you want a Rapsodo MLM2 Pro package and this 24-7 Golf Net with a mat and some side nets as well for under two grand, then use my code DMAX200. It'll save yourself a couple of hundred bucks off and you'll have the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro package, everything that you see here, plus side nets, okay? So get onto that. But right now, let's see how the wedge goes. Well, that was not a good start. Let's see what we got. Looking like a slight left spin axis. We'll see what the Rapsodo says. Pretty much a push spin axis says right on the Rapsodo. And the Garmin says left. Straight away, we got a bit of a discrepancy there. I actually think I pushed that right. I didn't think I hit it very well, but let's go again. All right, these are just <laughs> a couple of warm up swings here because these are not ideal. You want to see some bad shots, there's some bad shots. Let's see some good ones. Okay, that was nice. Much nicer. So we've got 110 meters of carry versus 108 meters of carry. And club speed 81 versus 85 on the Garmin. Left spin axis versus, again, a right spin axis on the MLM2 Pro 8000. 518 spin versus 8768. That's nice too. Pushing it a little right. There are some bumps here on these mats because I've had them outside, but we're looking at the data here more so than the actual result. Carry 104. Uh, well, let's look at the spin first 9930 versus 9013. That's nearly a thousand RPMs of difference. That's a lot. 104 carry versus 104 carry. So that's the same. When I am testing launch monitors, I always find that the wedges have the biggest difference when I'm testing launch monitors. So I'm not surprised to see that. And that makes it very hard to actually know which one's accurate until you get into, you know, something like a Skytrack comparison or something like that. But let's go, I've got eight iron now. <clears throat> I'm pushing a lot of these right. I am on slight slope, but we're here again for the data. 108 ball speed, I don't know about that. 136 carry versus 132, wasn't the greatest of swings. Um, let's look at the data, 7,781 spin, which is high, actually. Like for me, that's quite high. 7,078, that's sort of what I would expect. All right, so spin 6,966 versus 7,104, that's closer. And then we have carry of 139 versus 134. There's actually quite a difference. And this is surprising. I didn't expect to see this much of a difference between the two units. I did think that they would be quite tight, but let's actually see if we can flush one. Okay. I'm hitting these pretty well. I wonder if I've got the MLM2 Pro lined up just a little straighter than the Garmin, although I do. Both look pretty good. Yeah, that's an incorrect read from the MLM2 Pro, unfortunately. Okay. So, we see that they're a little bit all over the shop, which is my game at the moment, but the Garmin, again, is getting a completely different ball flight here than the MLM2 Pro, and I do feel like I turned that over. Um, I'm wondering if the ball dots of the MLM2 Pro are not actually working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another eight iron, just add it here as a second one, and I'm gonna get an actual RPT ball and see what happens there. So this is an actual Titleist RPT ball. Now this is not the RCT ball, but I've just never seen the MLM2 Pro really struggle like this. So I'll get a proper RPT ball, and let's 
see what happens here. That was nice. Now what do we see in the ball flight? So the Garmin's got it slightly fading right and we have the identical ball flight. So 147 carry versus 145, 7,098 on the spin rate versus 7,027. That is so much closer. That puts the myth to bed. I think it was actually the RCT ball with the RPT ball dot. I tried to do that to get the best comparison for you guys. However, it didn't seem to be working. Let's go again. Yep, that should be a little fade as well. Okay, so they're much better, much, much better. So, 6,407 versus 6,022, 117 mile per hour ball speed versus 121, that's a bit different. 154 meters of carry versus 149, and the club speed is saying 101 mile per hour versus 88. So I'm gonna give that to the MLM2 Pro because I don't swing the club speed at 101. That was ripped. That was the best strike of my life. I don't think that was a fade though. I've flushed that, I squared that. So the Garmin again has got that as a bit of a fade. And I guess this is where the Garmin was performing really well with the RCT ball. And now the MLM2 Pro is performing better with the RPT ball. So 156 carry versus 156 carry, they are exactly the same. Ball speed 124 versus ball speed 121. Club speed 88 versus 88.4. Curve right eight degrees versus left 5.8. Spin 6,277 versus 6,082. What do I get out of that test just with the iron and the wedges? In terms of the shot shape and the spin readings, I believe that both of these units are actually accurate. However, you do have to have their ball that's designed for the unit in order to get the most out of them. I think that the Garmin performed really well with the RCT ball and the MLM2 Pro was actually getting a little bit short. I tried to add the RPT ball dots on, but it just didn't do the same thing. As soon as I switched the ball over, I felt like everything I was feeling, the MLM2 Pro was giving me better results than the Garmin. So it's kind of like one all when they're using their own ball whatever you want to call it, like a footy match on home turf, you're always going to have the advantage when you're actually using something that's designed for each of these units. Let's jump into the driver. All right, so now I've got driver. I'm actually going to start with the RCT ball with the dots, but the dots are falling off, so we'll go three shots each and see how we go. Oh, that was terrible. I slipped because I'm standing on the edge of the mat, so you're going to have to have a little bit of grace here. I'm literally like this. It's better. Okay, 259 meters of carry versus 255. 3,198 spin versus, what do we got here? 3,074. 162 ball speed versus 167. That's actually a bit of difference. Club speed 113 versus 111.5. That was hit. All right, so we got that one good. So here, here we see an actual fade with the RCT ball and we see pretty much a straight-ish pull with the MLM2 Pro. And the MLM2 Pro says 4,666 spin versus 2,847, which is quite a bit of difference. And then you've got 265 meters of carry versus 228. So this is what I was saying, that you actually do need to use the balls that are allocated with the unit to get the most out of them. Really to get any kind of accurate data out of any of these units, you have to do what's provided to make the unit better. The RCT ball with the Garmin R10 looks like it's performing exceptionally well, but with the MLM2 Pro with the ball dots, it's not. I need the RPT ball with the MLM2 Pro, so let's do that. All right, RPT ball now with the MLM2 Pro. Didn't hit that well, that was bottoming. So this should probably spin up a little bit. Yeah, 3,545, 238 carry. So I'm gonna believe the MLM2 Pro here definitely because it says this is 2,800 spin, which it's just definitely not. I hit that right out of the bottom. Yeah, 2,700, 164 ball speed, 114 club speed. 
258 carry versus 263, and the shot shapes are both the same, pretty much dead straight. 1.48 on this match for the Garmin, 1.44 for the MLM2 Pro. Spin axis is right 3.3 .3 of a degree versus basically just straight. All right, so hit that pretty good. 166 ball speed, got it a little spinny. That's probably honestly just my stance. 259 versus 269, so it is 10 meters shorter, but the spin rate, 3004 versus 3006, so that's identical. What's the difference here? 259 carry, smash 1.43 versus 1.3. So I'm gonna say the garments had a bit of a misread there without the RCT ball. Um, and the MLM2 Pro again, with the RPT ball has taken it out. Through all of that testing with the MLM2 Pro and the Garmin R10, what I saw consistently was there was a big difference in each of the unit's accuracy when they've got the native ball that they're supposed to be using when you're out in an environment like this. Now this is not ideal by the way, you can see the 24-7 Golden has a white wall right behind it, okay? So the Garmin R10 is trying to read an RCT ball, which is white, with a white ball right behind it. Now you can get a sheet to cover that, but it did extremely well when it had the RCT ball of using the radar to get the metal insert thing going and actually give you accurate numbers and shot shape. Then when the MLM2 Pro had the RPT ball, it was the exact same thing. It was able to read the dot pattern, give you measured spin rates, give you measured spin axis, and give you accurate results in the end. So which one's for you? Well, honestly, if I was to choose, the MLM2 Pro has so many other features that are really cool, like impact vision, uh, like doing the shot traces, taking it down to the range. It has a range algorithm. Uh, it's got R Cloud, so you can download all of your previous shot data from sessions months and months ago. You can do all of that sort of stuff with the MLM2 Pro that you can't actually do with the Garmin R10. You can have dual cameras to set up, uh, you know, where you can see your front on view and also your rear view. You know, there's just a whole lot more. And for $1,099 with, uh, sorry, $1,999 with the 24-7 golf enclosure, with the mat, with side nets, with the MLM2 Pro by using my code DMAX200, that is just an unbeatable deal. And I would go with the MLM2 Pro pretty much every time with that value. Now I do need to stipulate that I am a brand ambassador for 24 seven golf who have this package and I do get a kickback on commission. So make of that what you will. I do try to keep these tests as honest and as open as I possibly can. Like I said, I think each individual unit performs exceptionally well when you have the correct ball and the correct setup for each unit. So I'll let you make your mind up on that one, but I'll see you on the next video. Cheers guys. Mm -hmm.